All right, so I am back from the store with a bed full of redwood. And what I'm gonna use is two by sixes. In the past, I've used two by fours for something like this. Since this is just for our own personal home projects, I'm gonna use two by sixes and rip them. And maybe I can get a little bit more wood out of the, the board that way. Um, if you saw my vlog entry, when I made a couple of the other ones for my wife, that's what I did for those and they look great. So I figure, what the heck, let's do them the same way. So I'm gonna go ahead and change out of my good clothes and then I can start cutting these things down to size. So I had drawn up all these trellises in SketchUp and that way I can have all the measurements that I need and I can know what sizes I'm working with and all that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that going right now. So I'm gonna keep the cutoffs from these because I'm gonna use a little bit of this later and I'll show you when we get to that point how I'm gonna use this cutoff. Uh, you know how when you buy lumber from the store, it's kind of rounded over. There's a little munched up section and just parts that aren't that great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rip off a real thin edge here so that it gives me a nice crisp uh, corners along these. And then that will give me a nice clean edge that I can then get my final width cut from. Yes. All right, so now I'm gonna set the fence to the two and a half inches, and that is gonna be the final width of the frame part of these trellises. Enjoy. All right, so we got everything cut to length, and we got it ripped down to our width and all that stuff. So now, as far as assembly goes on these main frames of the trellises, it's really simple. I'm just gonna use butt joints. I got these little plywood spacers just to bring these things up off of the table for when I put a couple clamps in place, which you'll see in a moment. I really like to use these clamping squares. I got these at Rockler. You can either make your own or you can buy them there, buy some other ones, whatever. Uh, but I just clamp the boards in place using something like this. And that just helps me to get my stuff lined up where I want it. What I'm gonna use also is I'm gonna use a Forstner bit. And what I'm gonna do is drill holes on the end so that I can run my screws into there. After I drill the hole with the Forstner bit, I just take this longer bit that's just a regular drill bit. It's just long, that's why it's a longer bit. And then I can follow up and I can just make the screw holes or make these pilot holes a little bit longer for when the screws go in. Holes drilled. I'm gonna tie everything together with some of these three inch deck screws. Super easy. Just butt joints, guys. First corner is done and I just gotta repeat that for the other three corners and for the rest of the trellises. Ah. There was a knot here and driving that screw in kind of blasted out this piece of wood. So not ideal. Again, fortunately it's just for us at the home. This side will end up being the back side and nobody's ever gonna see it anyway, except you guys. When life gives you lemons, right? So now that the outer frames are built, I'm gonna focus on working on the inside frame and I'm just gonna use two by six redwood again then I'm gonna rip it down to an inch and a quarter and I'm gonna do the same thing where I ripped off that front edge first and that way I can get rid of that factory rounded over thing. I want these edges sharp. Now 
now that I've got all these cut to length and all that stuff, I'm gonna cut the grooves and that way the hog wire can fit inside the grooves once these are mounted inside the frames. And I'm gonna go get a quick measurement of the thickness of the hog wire metal and that way I can know how wide to cut the grooves. So I'm gonna do that and I'll be right back. I made sure to get the straightest boards that I could, but even some of the boards had this dirty black marking all over it and also some other marks that they put on at the lumber yard or something. So I don't know, I didn't want that stuff on the finished trellises, so I sanded it off. With all the redwood sanded down pretty clean and I've got my grooves cut in all of the inside frame pieces and I've got these all cut to the length that I want, uh, now I can go ahead and kind of install these pieces. And when I install these in place, I want them to be centered between the front and the back. I've just got some half inch plywood that I'm using as those spacers. So with this one right in place where I want it, I'm just gonna use a couple clamps to keep it in place while I screw them down. You'll notice that I'm attaching the short sides first and I'll explain why in a few minutes. But in order to screw them in, I am gonna use a countersink bit just because this stuff's pretty dry and I've had it split on me in the past. And so I don't want it to split on me if I can avoid it. And I'm just using some exterior grade screws that I'm gonna run into this groove here. And just like that, we got the first one attached. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other ones and then I'm gonna pretty much finish out all the rest of the trellises. You guys don't have to see all that, but this way you can get an idea of what's going on here. So earlier, when I mentioned that I was attaching the short pieces first, that was for good reason, because what I'm gonna do is actually take this top section off, and then that way the hog wire trellising stuff can slide down through the top into these grooves that I made. And so to take this off, I'm just gonna unscrew these so that the butt joint is disassembled. Oh, and I should mention that I wanna make a mark somewhere on here so that I remember which side faces out because it looks so similar from every angle that I don't wanna mix it up. So I just wanna make sure they go back in the right place. And just like that. So now I can go get my piece of cattle panel or hog wire, whatever you wanna call it, and uh, bring it in here, measure my opening size keeping in mind additional length for the, uh, to account for the grooves here. And then I can cut the hog wire down so that it's just the right size so that it fits in like a glove. So I'm trying to be real careful when I measure it so I can get the same distance right after this vertical piece to there and right after this vertical piece to there. In this case, I wanna make this 27 and a quarter. And so I just wanna get the same amount on both sides. Make my first mark and I know that 27 and a quarter come over here and make that mark. Now that I've got that mark set, all I gotta do is transfer that mark all the way down. And I'll do that with the help of my adjustable square, making marks all the way down, and then I can cut them with the bolt cutter. Based on my original mark, I set my square to that distance, and then right at the end, I can just make my mark. And what's nice is because of the shape, this inside corner of the adjustable square, and this inside corner of the trellis, it kind of just fits right in. So once I have my distance set, it's just easy to mark those things. And so then I can do that all the way down. So with the width cut, I just gotta do the same thing for the height. Now we've got everything cut and I can bring the redwood part of it back into the equation. And the only tricky thing about doing this part is that all the ends that I cut, they're really sharp and jagged now. So sometimes they tend to catch on the inside of the redwood here, but if you're careful, you can get through it without doing too much damage. So since we've got just the three sides of this trellis, 
and it kind of tends to do this as you're working with the hog wire stuff. If you have a clamp, a long clamp, you might want to use that to help to keep it tight together. I'm going to do that, but you certainly don't have to, but I'm going to. And then I can find my top piece here, check for my mark, and my mark is right here. So I'm just going to do this and tighten back down. So with that one assembled, I'm gonna celebrate a little mini victory for finishing one of them, and I'm gonna finish out the rest of them. So earlier when I was talking about hanging on to the scrap pieces, well now's the time when I'm gonna use those. And what I'm gonna do, if you recall, when I was assembling the outer frames, I used a Forstner bit to drill that hole. So that left me with a pretty big hole that I would need to fill because I didn't wanna see that hole and I didn't wanna see the screw heads. So using a plug cutter, this is the half inch plug cutter and that's the size of the hole that my Forstner bit was. What I'm gonna do is load it into the drill press and plunge cut some plugs. And then I'm gonna take this wood over to the table saw and pop those plugs out so that I can use them. So here's all the plugs that I just popped out of that thing. Not too shabby. You can see that those ones have a little point on them and that's from the drill bit and you can kind of see if they, I don't know if you can tell, but they've got a bit of a taper on them so that you kind of know which way they go in. But if you can't figure it out, just know that the side with the hole is the side that you stick down into your workpiece. So a bunch of plugs, easy to make. So now that I've got those plugs cut, I'll just use a little tight bond three, drip a little bit into the hole that I drilled earlier. And then, I can take the plug and I could maybe, it's, it's loose enough a little bit where you can kind of spin it around, get a little bit of that glue on the plug and around the walls of that hole. Just give it a little tap in and I'm gonna do the other one also. And so now that those are all pounded in, I'll work on the other ones, and then as I'm working on those other ones, these will dry and I'll come back with a flush saw and I can trim off the excess plugs so that these will have a nice smooth finish on top. You could also use a chisel if that's your vibe, but I like to use the flush cut saw and then hit it with the sander. To install the trellises into the ground in their final resting place, I'm gonna use these U-posts and I just picked these up at Home Depot. They're pretty good because they're actually pretty cheap and they come in different lengths. I think they're typically used for other things like fencing or agricultural type of things, but anyway, they come in as green color. I don't want them green, I want them black. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint them black. So I'm not even gonna bother painting the bottom like foot of these because that part's gonna go down in the ground anyway. So it saves me a little bit of time and a little bit of paint. Since these trellises will be outside and they're just for us, I'm using a pretty basic clear sealer. All we did to apply this stuff was fill up a spray bottle and squirt it on, and then we back brushed it with a cheap old chip brush. We did a couple coats and that was that. To mount the legs, I just eyeballed the location and made a mark with a spring-loaded punch. That makes it a little easier for the screw to find its hole so that I can send it. With the first side complete, I can flip it over, do the other side, and then repeat this on all the rest, and they're ready to install. Now with everything made and sort of pre-assembled, time to install these. So we're gonna put this one right here. I'm gonna use this auger bit in the drill. And this blue tape I've set up to be about 12 inches. So the hole's gonna be about 12 inches. And that's what we're going to put the uh, post down in there. And I'm gonna add a little bit of concrete. Holes are augered out. And we're gonna set these posts down in there. And obviously it's not level or plumb yet, but what we're gonna do is use some stakes and some sticks and some clamps to get everything plumb and level where we want it. And then I'm gonna be able to put in our concrete and let her cure. 
Now that is perfect. That's exactly where I want it. So took a little back and forth and some adjusting, but I got it in a good spot. And so now I'm just gonna grab the concrete and no, I'm not gonna use the whole entire bag on those little holes, but I'm gonna use it for a little extra security. And I'm using the fast set stuff because I have zero patience and I want these ready and done for my wife's yard because she's been asking for them for a long time. So <laughs> first one is done. And while the concrete sets, I'm gonna work on installing the other four. As weird as this may seem, I somehow forgot to shoot footage of the finished trellises for my own video, but my wife and I shot footage of them for a video on our other channel, What's Up in the Garden. So what you're about to see is footage from that video, and then I didn't have a great way to end this video, so it ends pretty abruptly. I know, I messed up. Don't judge me, but I hope you guys will stick around for my future videos. Thanks for watching. In a previous video, we were talking about some new trellises that I was building, and I'm happy to say they are finally done. Aren't they beautiful? They're beautiful. We got redwood and hog wire, and we've got five of these, and they kind of go with two that we previously had made. What we'll do is we'll just show you real quickly where those are. So Des, if you can carefully come across the catwalk. Ooh. If I'm gonna trip, you tell me there's one there. Yep. I'm not gonna walk backwards. Yeah. Here's number three. There it is. <laughs> and we'll keep coming on this way here. And number four is right here. And then over here, we've got number five mounted up against this fence here. And down the fence are the other two that I did previously. So, Okay, bye. Okay, bye.